Good afternoon. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Excellent. Love the show. The scheming, the backstabbing, the plotting. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. My, my type of jam. And it's all done in very nice setting and beautiful gowns. And it's just a good ride. Um, Talk about what intrigued you for, for the to the project. Because, you know, it was written a while ago. But so many of the themes are mirroring the world we live in today, which is a little scary. <laughs> it is a little scary. And it's uh, I'm a little sad by that. And um, when Asimov was first writing this in the tail end of the 40s, he was writing in a Cold War environment after World War II. And when we started writing season two, I never imagined we'd be in a Cold War environment again. Like in a million years, I never imagined that would be happening. And yet here we are. And I guess that was... The brilliance of Asimov is he was like history and humanity keeps repeating itself and keeps going through these cycles. And then only when we learn from our mistakes, are we really going to, you know, progress. And I don't, I don't know to what extent we've learned from our mistakes, to be honest. I think it's also interesting we're in, we're in this conversation about AI and, and, oh, and, yeah. and, and all of that. And it's so prevalent in the show, right? Where you have, you know, especially, you know, this obsession with legacy and trying to manipulate and, 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 and this person's best friend is not a human kind of like, yeah. and yeah. they're in, in, and they're also having a hand in how things are being played out, which I find utmost fascinating. You know what I mean? We think we create these things to be at our service, but we don't ever think about that that the technology can morph into something that we can't control. Talk about that aspect of it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, who's the prisoner and who's the keeper? I mean, that's one thing we play with in the Imperial storyline completely. And, you know, I think part of the secret with Demerzel is we're aware of the fact that the audience perceives her as a human, but she's not a human. Uh, she is an AI. She has been around for, I think we said something like 18,000 years. And, you know, there's no telling if her sense of morals maps onto, you know, what a human is. Sometimes she presents as a villain. Sometimes she presents as a heroic figure. And, and I think it would be a mistake to just assume we know what she or it is thinking, you know, you know, on the surface of it, she serves empire. But I think what you're alluding to is they may serve her. And that's one of the interesting things that we play with in season two. Oh, well, absolutely. I find her fascinating. Absolutely. Yeah, for, for the whole thing. And, and I, I, again, I love the show and I think it's so, I think it's a smart way to do sci-fi, but at the same time, as I said, as we get all the stuff that's kind of like makes a fun soap opera in a oh, very yeah. intelligent way. No, I love that soap <laughs> opera phrase. They said, you know, what did you do in season two? And I said, I made it a little soapier. You know, we made it a little soapier. We add a little, uh, a little more romance. Uh, we add a little, little more humor. Uh, you know, so I, I think good shows do have a good element of soap to them. Absolutely. Again, thank you so much for your time, and best of luck this season. I mean, if season two is like this, I cannot wait for season three. Oh, thank you so much. You're welcome. <laughs>